Look at you all. Look at each other. This is good. It is a good day. A day that we were not promised. It is a good day in spite of the aches and pains. It is a good day in spite of the fact that the devil threw some things in our way all week long, even until this morning, but only by God's permission. And it is a good day. Why? Because greater is he that is in us who are believers than he that is in this world, that we are more than conquerors through Christ. So, ladies, it just tells a clock.
promise we're not going to try it. I won't cry anymore. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> I will praise you. Yes, I will. We will praise you, Lord. Because we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. Why wouldn't we say hallelujah? Okay. okay. Stand up, make no talk. Okay. <laughs> see? Thanks for looking out. Good looking. Good looking. <laughs> And in, in Psalm 139, verse 14, it reminds us we are made in his image. Yeah. Amen. We can't help but be more than our circumstances. We can't help but fight the good fight and trust. Oh, am I not talking? No, water. Your, your water is in the way oh, of my camera. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I need to get you. It's all good. Yeah. Listen, you don't have to get me because this is old Mike's and my grandma was Rose Lee. So it's all good. I won't mess you up. Uh, but we, you know, we have to, and, and that's how we live lives. Excited. Joyful in the midst of the storm. Yes. Not joyful about what we're going through. Because it hurts sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts way down deep. Way down. Wow. And makes us bend. And makes us recoil. Wow. And makes us sometimes doubt that God is there. But he always is. And I know everybody in here got a testimony about it. And if you don't, you will. God is. God was, God is, and God always oh, will be. Yes. Yes. So we have nothing to fear. Why wouldn't we again? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, that God's children up out of here. So when we look at the subject of this year's celebration, worthy to be praised. The Christian life, glorifying God as we travel through this journey on this side of the living. Because guess what, y'all? How many of y'all got GPS in y'all car? If you don't have it on your car, you got it on your phone, right? Yes. Well, guess what? We, who are numbered among the say, we don't need no GPS. Amen. When we get ready to leave here, when God said, Come on, daughter. In a millisecond, close your eyes, be home. No detours, no accidents, no nothing. We are home in the presence of a loving, loving Father. So we grow and we live each day in that hope, in that expectation that all of what we go through on this side of the living it's only for a little while. Yes. Because see, when we hold on, when we choose God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit over the fear and trickery of the enemy, yeah. what? push him. Yeah. The Bible says resist him and dude is a chicken. Okay? <laughs> and he's not going to waste his time trying to convince somebody to do something that he does not, but understand the chicken got power. Don't underestimate it. The chicken has power, but only by the permissive will of the Father. And because Christ, our way maker back to the Father, has overcome all of that, what do we say? Hallelujah! Yes, yes, he is worthy to be praised. Even when you cannot see, even when we don't know, even when there's a detour, when GPS says, oh, sorry, the fastest road route is no longer available to you. So you got to take a detour. 
Okay, detour, it's okay. You know, sometimes it is scary. Sometimes it is the uncertainty can cause us to fear. But again, when we look past the stuff, when we look to the hills when it's coming to our help, we can praise God right there in the midst of it and give thanksgiving to him. Why? Because he is a way maker. Okay? The curves in the road mean nothing to God. There are no unexpected with God. But if we hold on, if we trust, if we obey, if we go into that word, so when the test comes, we can pull on that word through the power of the Holy Spirit. We got something. We got something. And yes, 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 we can praise him. We can praise him all by ourselves. And sometimes, sisters, isn't that what we have to do? You know, the schedule gets busy. I don't care if you're married or single. Children or child, there's always something pulling. Always something, somebody needing. But God and our judge advocate, Christ, always going before the Father on our behalf to say to the Father, I know what it's like to feel. I know what it's like to be. And the Father says, oh, but grace and mercy yes. are my good creation, yes. my children. Yes. We have to remind ourselves of that. So we can find joy in those circumstances that feel like they're breaking us. When God sends somebody through a telephone call, a ring on the doorbell, and you answer that door, and there's that face. And they walk in, and they embrace you, and say, you were on my mind, so I came. You were on my mind, so I called. That's why we have to take time, sisters, to think of one another. Amen. In the midst of our storm. And my Winnie is not here. I call her Winnie. Her name is Gwen. She and Annie, they are sidekicks. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and she would always say to me, I want you to find something to go do to go and help somebody else. I said, Winnie. I don't need to be trying to help nobody else right now. And I'm a shipwreck just about. Okay, I need to let the Lord just do me. She said, honey, trust me. When you get out and you start serving God and helping others, even as a shipwreck, you, before you know it, God will have put it all back together back when it was the first time. Okay? among the saved as yet. We can call children of God to be salt and light. Okay? We're not supposed to hide our light. We're supposed to live in that living, that light, that salt that's good for all the things that it does will enable us to show the love that God has called us to be one to another. And remember when Jesus was betrayed and Peter had denied him and the folk called him, some of the folks said, yeah, you, one of them. He was like, ah, 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 ah. you got the wrong brother. It's like, ah, we got the right one. Your speech gives you the right. We have to be known by how we live our lives before one another. And sisters, if we can't love each other to 
enough to check each other and love, something is wrong. Yes. Amen. Because when you check, we check one another in love, we're not doing something to crush someone while they're down. We got to learn how to get up under each other. Yes. Why? That's what Christ did for us. Yes. That's what God does for us every day in the midst of my sinful self. Amen. Anybody else in here? That's yes. sin that yes. you know God is wrestling with you. Yes. With? Okay. Yes. We know. So here again, we praise God. We give him thanks. Why? We got another chance, yes. another unpromised chance to do better today than we did yesterday. Yes. To do better sometimes in the next hour than we did the hour before. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. You know that poem, don't quit? Amen. We can't. God didn't make a mistake when sin came in the world. God didn't make a mistake in the plan when Christ redeemed us to the Father. Amen. Christ did not make a mistake when he decided on his knees. When they talk about that garden of Gethsemane moment, in his life, where he wrestled in his humanity with what he was going to do on our behalf, so much so that his physical body, sweat, blood, the capillaries burst in his skin and blood was running down. And he still said, wipe it up. Not my will, but thy will be done. You got a hallelujah to that and nobody else, nobody else, nobody else, not the mother who gave us birth that would go to the wall for us. No one else loves us that much. Amen. They can't. We can fight. But Christ conquered. He overcame. God raised him up. And all the glory that God had is in the sun. Yes. And so now, we can go to that well. And it'll never run dry. That's right. Amen. We can be happy that we have been called out of this world. Yes. We live in it. Yes. But we're no longer of it. And if we are not willing to be uniquely set apart, not look down our noses as if we're better because we're not. Amen. 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 You said something. No, we're not. We have been called to learn of the goodness of God through his word and when we understand it, to walk in obedience to that truth and giving our lives to him, going into that water, symbolizing a rebirth, a remaking of us, if you will. Now, who are we to look at somebody else and tell them because their lives are a certain way that they don't stand a chance? You better hush up and remember what God said. Judge not that you be not judged. Why? Because all souls belong to who? How do we not glorify and honor them? How do we not give God praise and thanksgiving? How do we forget that the goodness, the greatness of God first, the greatness of God, a characteristic, greatness and goodness, can't be separated from God. They are this. They are in Him. There is no God without it. And we accept that. We can't reason. His, 
His ways, the Bible tells us, are so far above our own. We cannot understand it, so don't try. It's too doggone frustrating. How many of you ever thought when they start bringing this conversation about evolution and how we came from the age? And then you say, you, you try to reason in your youthful silliness <laughs> that, well, let me think. God is, but I don't know where he came from. Faith says I don't have to. Amen. And we have to understand that when it comes to meeting the world, where they are, just like God met us where we were. Yes, he did. Everything is not for us to try and explain. Amen. All the time. Amen. Even when we give our lives to the Lord, we are not expected to know it all. Again, we glorify God in our obedience. Amen. And if we will learn how to forgive ourselves, how to love ourselves, because the only way Christ could do what he did for us was out of love. Amen. We praise the Lord. We glorify him. We honor him when we love one another in like fashion. Now, does that mean we're always going to be perfect? No. But does it mean that when we mess up and realize we've messed up, Go to God first. Yes. Amen. So we can fix our stinking thinking. Yeah. So Amen. the Holy Spirit can clean up the heart, this heart that reasons, not this heart that pumps. So that when the words come out, we will treat another sister, another brother in the same way that we want to. You know, when you met you 18 somebody, when you go to somebody, that's what the words say. If you're offended, you go and you go. But you mean who? You and your posse? Thank you. One to one. One to one. It's, it, down the road, it's room for the posse if, if it needs to be a posse intervention. But in the beginning, it's this. Why? Because it's about relationships, sister. Yes. It's always, always about relationships. Mm -hmm. I can say that I love you when I don't know you all. Amen. I can say that and mean that from the bottom of my heart. Yes. It made me happy when I walked in here and saw these sisters all of you sitting up here. It was something to give God glory and honor and praise about because the devil has been on my keista for oh three weeks. I mean, like a bad dream. And I had to shake that joke off my back to go ride somebody else. But that decision, if we don't make that kind of conscious decision in our lives, then the weight of the rider becomes so heavy that we are bent over and almost broke down. But God, but God. So when we look at him, when we remember his goodness in our lives, another innate characteristic that can't be separated, we know that's our inheritance. And guess what, y'all? We don't have to wait till we get to the other side of the living to get it. We can go to the bank of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. But we got to be careful about our asking because if we ask selfishly, we don't get it. Why? God knows better what we need than we know ourselves. But if we trust him, trust him in it. He will take us farther than we can dream for ourselves. And is that not something to glorify and honor the God of God? Now, I have this um, gum in my mouth. 
and I'm sorry. I um, when I had chemo the last time, the cancer was so aggressive. They gave me the strongest chemo, and then what they call nulasta on the back of the arm. And so I wrestled with this dryness of the mouth and, and difficulty with my lungs sometimes, but yet I am still doing better than they thought I would do.
have been brave enough to pull up my shirt and show you that. <laughs> I, and I say that because, see, scars can sometimes frighten us. Because, you know, let's just face it, some of us wrestle with a little vanity. No, all of us, because all of us yes. like to look good. We want to look our best. We want to be our best. And sometimes we have to carry the scars of how the Lord broke us yeah. and picked us up, All right, now. put us back together, better than we were, and said, now you just go head on. Yeah. Okay?